Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be going over the derivative of logarithmic functions. So now that we're used to not liking logs and having these negative feelings towards logs, but we're going to see that actually the logs and the properties of logs are going to be very helpful to us when computing different derivatives. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that the ln of v is equal to 1. So that's going to help us when we talk about the derivative rules for logs. So here we have the derivative of log b of u, b being the base of the logarithm, is equal to 1 over u, and u is just whatever the angle is or whatever is inside of the parentheses of the, of the logarithm, times on the denominator times ln of b. So we're going to multiply the denominator by ln of the base, right? Which is going to come straight from here. And then we're going to multiply all that by the derivative by the derivative of the angle or the derivative of whatever's inside of the parentheses, right? And then we're going to have our second type, which is when we have an ln, which is just a log base e, right? ln is equal to L, um, log base e. And when we take the derivative of that, it's going to be a little more simple because we're just going to have 1 over u, 1 over u, u being whatever's inside of the parentheses, times the derivative of whatever is inside of the parentheses, whatever the derivative of that u is, right? And the reason why we get rid of this, we no longer have this ln of b is because if we were to have ln of the base here, what is the base when we have ln? The base is going to be e, as you guys see, right? The, the base of an ln is e. So having ln of e in the bottom there is the same thing as having a 1, therefore, we don't actually care to have an ln of b because it's always going to be 1. So that's why it doesn't matter when we have ln of when we have ln of an angle, right? So let's go ahead and use all these properties because right now they're all like all these textbook definitions that we actually don't like. So we're going to go ahead and just go and do, go ahead and do some examples in which we can see how to use these properties, right? Instead of looking at all these crazy formulas. So let's go ahead and look at example A in which we have that f of x is equal to ln of 2x, right? So in this case, the 2x is equal to our u, right? Our angle, our inside of the parentheses is equal to u. And we're going to go ahead and take the derivative, which goes like this. 1 over u is the first part of the derivative. So 1 over the angle, which is going to be 1 over 2x, just coming straight from there, 1 over 2x times the derivative of u, right, times du dx, which is a derivative of the angle. And what is the derivative of 2x? And that is actually 2. So when we go ahead and combine this and like, simplify this derivative, it's going to give us 2 over 2x, or if we cancel out this 2 and this 2, it's going to be 1 over x. So our derivative is 1 over x, right? And we're done. So let's go ahead and do example. We're going to go ahead and do example B. So here we have log 5 of x squared. So we see here that whenever we have whenever we have log of a base, we're going to have to bring back the ln of the base, which comes from our formula right up here, right? We have to do the ln of the base that we have there in red. So let's go ahead and compute the derivative. And what you're going to have to do, 1 over the angle, which in this case the angle is u. I mean, u is the angle, which is x squared. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply it by ln of the base, which in this case the base is 5. So we're going to have ln of 5 on the bottom. And that is going to be times the derivative of the angle. And what is the angle? The angle is right here. It is x squared, and the derivative is 2x, which is going to give us 2x on the top over x squared times ln of 5, which we're going to reduce the x squared and the x, and that is going to give us 2 over x ln of 5. But check this out. If we actually use our properties of logarithms, and we're going to rewrite, rewrite our logarithm using our properties, which we have up here, up here, we're actually going to bring down the exponent to the front, use that property, 
and we're going to bring this 2 to the front. So we're going to have y is equal to 2 log 5 of x, right? That's exactly what we're going to have there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of log 5x, and we're just going to multiply it by its coefficient or its constant, which is going to be 2. So it's going to be 2 times the derivative of whatever derivative of log base 5 of x is, right? And that is going to be 1 over the angle, or 1 over the u, which is just 1 over x, times ln of the base, which is 5, ln of the base, which is 5, times the derivative of the angle. And the angle in this case is x, so the derivative of that is going to be 1, okay? So if we simplify this, we get 2 in the top, x in the bottom, ln of 5. So you guys see that we get exactly the same thing if we use our properties or not. But in this case, it didn't really make a crazy difference whether to use our properties or not, right? But let's go check out example C and see how, how helpful it is to actually use our properties. So here we have that. We have find the derivative of ln of x times cosine of x. So here's the deal. I know that the derivative of this if I start it off, it's going to be 1 over the angle, which is x cosine of x, right, times the derivative of the angle. But what is going to be the derivative of this angle? That is going to be an annoying product rule. It's going to be a product rule, which I actually want to avoid. I want to avoid doing this product rule because I feel there's, some, there's going to be something easier than having to do this product rule. So I don't want to do this product, I'm being spoiled, and I'm going to look for a way around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my function, I'm going to rewrite my y as ln of, you see here I recognize that I have an x multiplying by a cosine, so if I look up here, whenever I have two functions multiplying, they're going to break up into the individual logs, and they're going to add, right, that's my rules, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to break up the x and the cosine of x into the individual logs, and they're going to add. So it's going to be ln of x plus ln of cosine. So let's see if I have to do a product over here. I'm going to have y prime is equal to 1 over the angle, which is x, times the derivative of the angle, which is just 1, because the derivative of x is just 1. Now I'm going to have plus again 1 over the angle which the angle in this case is is cosine of x so 1 over the angle 1 over cosine times the derivative of the angle and when taking the derivative of cosine it starts with a c so the derivative is going to be negative and that's going to be and cosine is married to sine so the derivative is going to be negative sine of x and now I'm done and I didn't actually have to do any product rule and I'm just going to go ahead and just clean this up just a tad. And it's going to be 1 over x. I'm going to bring this negative, multiplying by this positive to the front. It's going to, so the answer is going to be minus 1 over, or well not 1 over, sine on top now, over cosine of x. All right? So now I have symbol my function. And if I want to go one step farther in simplification, I am going to recognize that sine over cosine is equal to tangent and I'm gonna have 1 over x minus tangent and I didn't have to do I didn't have to do a product rule I just had to expand and use my rules of logarithms right so in this case I just had two factors multiplying but let's think about it if I would have had a factor dividing if I would have had three factors multiplying if I would have had more than two factors multiplying it actually makes a lot of sense for us to use the rules of logarithms so we can make our life easier and not have to do these crazy product rules or necessary quotient rules so now let's do some practice problems and how else we can use logarithm rules and take derivatives of logarithms in different examples so see you guys next time